That nigga crazy, yeah. <laughs> Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... I'm R. Kelly and this is my life. An inmate at... R. Kelly. Institution. This call is Man, they just hit you with 30 years, son. To accept charges, press 1. To refuse charges... No. Using... Absolutely not. One child McDonald's and not all the McDonald's. other kids McDonald's. Like, I don't I'm not have going. any and fucking kids. On top of that, you mean to tell me Where are you, wh- you can give and dab and want to I think you got the lady. I think you got the wrong number. You can't see all my other kids McDonald's, though? Jesus. What the fuck is going on, bro? <sighs> Shit is crazy. Again? Hello? When I see ass, titties, ass and titties. Ass, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's my shit though. Alright. <sighs> Hello, children. Would you like to eat some scrambled eggs in my basement? <laughs> it's not as creepy as Ethan Hawks, but you know, I thought I would just, you know, just, you know, fuck it. The Black Phone, directed by Scott Derrickson. Mr. Telephone Man, there's something wrong with my line. When I call my son's number, I get a dead kid every time. The Black Phone is directed by Scott Derrickson. It's, it's basically about a kidnapper who kidnapped kids in the 1978 era, you know, the Fonzie era, and he keeps them in his basement, and then he kills them after he plays a little bit of game with them. Scott Derrickson is also known for Sinister and the first Doctor Strange. And quick fun fact, that mask that he used, that the grabber used here, it was made by Tom Savini, one of my childhood heroes. So my quick overall thoughts of the black phone and stuff that I really like. Scott Derrickson has a way of shooting films with this uh, grainy, musty 70s look that just seems terrifying. He could just film some shoelaces with a little bit of blood on them. And you know it's like a scary... Uh, episode of unsolved mysteries and shit like what the fuck happened to these kids or what's happening if you ever seen sinister it's a part in sinister with the film reel where a bunch of kids just kind of die it's completely and utterly creepy so i really like his creep aspect of the 70s and how he's able to capture that i also like the direction of scott derrickson here uh he does a good job building tension he has some nail biting moments in this film and i'm gonna get to the stars ethan hawk is fantastic as the grabber which he basically grabs kids kids in the 70s but I want to say this yo there's a child kidnapper going around snatching kids in a white van and all these kids are still roaming around free I mean the grabber was snatching kids quicker than R. Kelly at McDonald's recess you know what I'm saying y'all might want to stick together go home and watch Happy Days Fonzie and shit I also liked about this film they took a while to build the characters our character Finn and his sister and they go to school and you got these super bullies I mean, they was doing some shit in this school that this should be in prison. They should be in prison. They should be on 21 lockdown. You know what I'm saying? They was like literally beating kids down to death. I'm like, yo, I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure that kid is either going to be in a self-induced coma or dead. You know what I'm saying? They were doing some brutal shit, hitting each other with rocks, blood coming down. I was like, this shit is violent. Yo, I could just watch the movie about these fucking violent ass kids. You know what I'm saying? But our story doesn't get going to the grabber, grab, spin, and locked him in the basement. Then he started getting mysterious calls from this phone, which are the other dead children that's helping him escape. And at first I thought, like, how far can we go with this? It's going to be the same shenanigan over and over again. It's not going to be interesting. You're going to write yourself into the wall. But I want to say Scott Derrickson did keep it interesting of this kid trying to escape 
uh, from this basement. And I will say this, this was a creepy part, but I thought it could have been done better. Like the first kid calls on the phone and he's like a disembodied voice. He keeps repeating himself, you know, like, cause he's not from this realm, this realm that we live in. So I was kind of believing like, oh yeah, he's not quite talking like a human, you know what I'm saying? He's just trying to convey the message. But then as we get later into the story, they just full talking like they got 5G connects and yo motherfucker, I told you the code is 4123 is upstairs. Get your ass out of here. I ain't got time. I'm already dead. You know, they start talking like that. I was like, yo, that took away from the creep element when you got these ghosts talking at full volume. You can hear them crystal clear. I thought that was a little uh, not scary. So that's one of my biggest gripes of the movie. But Ethan Hawke shines as the creeper. That mask is totally creepy. I gotta find a Halloween mask. I need that in my life. Another one of the things I love about this movie, Scott Derrickson sets up little tropes in the movie that are a little convenient. Like, okay, that happened because of this, you know, equals that. But then you'd be like, it's one part of the movie. I was like, like, how convenient is that, you know? Like, I, I was going to escape anyway, but, like, this part is really convenient. Like, you, when you see it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, come on, come on, son. Come on, son. And at the end of the day, this movie is more of a thriller uh, than a horror. With little horror elements, but I, I, I was never quite really scared, you know, time to see it. Especially when the ghosts start talking, you know, in full 5G, it kind of took me out of it. But overall, the thriller aspect, I think, worked on a more of a um, Silence of the Lambs type level, you know, but not as disturbing as Silence of the Lambs. It's a great movie to watch on a rainy day, especially it's a great date movie too. If you want to date to jump in your arms and all that, like what's gonna happen is cool. But for me being so desensitized by horror, um, you know, it wasn't a hundred percent horror for me. It was just like, you know, horror light. But overall, I think Scott Derrickson and these kids, especially the little girl here, does a magnificent job. I mean, it's a part when she gets small spoiler, but she gets a whooping and she took it like a G. I'm like, that's how, that's how you take whoopings. And I haven't seen somebody get whooped on screen. I can't even remember, but I remember my whoopings. I used to get the ass. You ever had that switch? That switch your granny tell you go get that switch? I mean, we, we were child abuse back in the day. Back in the day, you know, grandmothers would have been canceled, but we got our little ass whooped. But overall, if I'm going to score the black phone. I think I'm still going to give it a solid four out of five. I think it's a great summertime horror to get away from the superhero movies or the, you know, the Top Gun Mavericks. You want a little horror slash thriller in your life that's not too intense, but still kind of creepy at the same time. Go check out Black Phone. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead, hit me that like button. And if you really like this content, just come on, just subscribe to the channel. We're going to have a lot more fire reviews coming out. And as always, guys, don't just stare at it. Eat it. Peace. Don't just stare at it. Eat it. I'm out cold, you hoes, been exposed. Walk up on you slow with the flow, and I know you got mo left for dead on the road. I strode when your car got